Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides that auto advance every 15 seconds. My name is Paul. I'm the software architect for a, an advertising firm in San Francisco. I'm going to talk to you about cloud computing and how it can let you take a project or an idea you're thinking about and build it out, see it live on the internet in less time for less money and more reliably than if you actually went out and bought a bunch of actual machines. So what's so neat about the cloud? Number one, there's no upfront investment. You don't have to go out and buy a bunch of stuff. You get to pay by the hour and wait for the slide. Go. There we go. Uh, you get to pay by the hour. It's pay as you go. That's great for a lot of people just starting out if you don't have a mega million dollars and a venture capital fund behind you. It's disposable. You get to do that thing with the internet service that you're thinking about and then throw it in the cyberspace recycle bin. It's loosely coupled. If you've ever seen a little kid with Legos and imagination, you know how awesome loosely coupled systems are. It's just like a parking lot. You don't own it, you just go use it. You don't negotiate a contract and make a reservation and figure out what you're gonna do. You show up, you park, you use it, you pay your, month, your fee when you're done and you leave. But just like in parking lot, if you're gonna use a whole bunch, it makes sense to buy into a contract, get a monthly fee that's probably less and know that when you show up to use it, it's gonna be there. It's not too likely, but your cloud provider could possibly run out of space. If you've got a reservation, just like that parking lot, you know you can show up whenever it is. You've got a space. You can go there. You'll get in. Okay, the problem with computer stuff in general, as we all know, is backups. Oh, my gosh, what happens if my data goes bad, something happens, a server crashes? It takes a lot of work and a lot of planning to make sure that you can manage and set up and handle all of your backups. That's why cloud service providers will do that for you. Redundant storage. They set multiple copies of your files on multiple disk drives in multiple locations in the, in the data center, and they make sure that if one of those goes bad or a hard drive crashes, they'll make a copy for you. You don't even know about it. It happens transparently in the background. You can just go to sleep knowing everything's fine. Redundant processing works pretty much the same way. You've got a computer doing a thing. It turns out it's really hard to figure out how to keep a computer running without a problem forever. It's really easy to figure out how to replace it. So you just make sure you can replace it. It's redundant, it's disposable. You can see all the little blocks all over the place. That represents data centers in different floodplains using different power centers. If a meteor strikes in one place, the other ones are working fine. It's still going. Then you get to take advantage of that distributed storage and put your files near the person who wants to use them or the service that needs to use them. Nobody wants to wait a long time for their video or their image. Take advantage of the distributed nature of it. Distributed processing works a little bit differently. <laughs> Usually you don't care where the actual server is, but by moving them out into different areas, you can monitor. And when one of them crashes, you can get your microwave dimmer from the other Safeway. That also then brings us to local streaming. By putting the data and the processing near the people who are using it, you get to take advantage of the fact that you could have your own YouTube, your own multiplayer game with lots of people using it, and they're using a server that's near to them, and it makes it seem like they've got the internet in their backyard. It's also scalable. Not that I understand this graphic, and neither do you, but as things get better, <laughs> and things get better, you can keep making the dog bigger, and it's scalable. That's great. So that it grows with you as you grow. And when Scotty needs to get more, Scotty, I need more power. He flips a switch and you get more power. It's amazing. I've actually spun up a thousand servers just on a whim. And then my boss asked me why he had to pay $200. But I said, because I needed more power to test it. But the cost is linear. This is important. With most services, if you had a cell phone in the you know late 90s, you remember if you went over the minutes you prepaid for, they charge you way more and it didn't make any sense. Cloud servicers, the good ones, don't do that. If you use more and you get more successful, it's still a linear cost. What if we needed to do something like encode all the videos that we're uh, taping here today and there was a whole bunch more of them than the seven we've got? You could start a whole bunch of little worker bees, and then manage them from the mothership. You get to do all this stuff in parallel, start doing a whole bunch of jobs at the same time, instead of having one machine that has to work through them one by the next, by the next, by the next. <laughs> one thing I need to point out, 
Outsourcing is not cloud computing. Just because somebody else takes your server and puts it in their building does not make it the cloud. Don't fall into that trap. It needs to be reliable, redundant, and scalable to be cloud computing and really make it happen. So what could you do with this information? You might have an idea for an iPhone app, an Android app, a Facebook app. Something that you think, oh, I'd have to go out and buy a huge server and figure out all this stuff. You don't need to. You can get a cloud computing piece that will scale up, do what you need over time, get bigger and be more successful. And hopefully as you're making more money with your idea, it can grow with you. Thank you very much. <laughs>